All right, good evening, everybody. I usually don't think of the titles to my videos until after I, I've made the video. But at this time, I would like to, you know, say what the title is that I'd like to say for the video. It is that Yafed is a threat to, to America. And it's really true. It's quite scary that there's such an organization in America, but there's, this is part of the general, really frightening uptick in Marxism in America today, this uh, Alexia Cortez winning uh, a, a primary in Queens in a very highly Democrat uh, congressional district. person who doesn't know really simple logic, simple math, uh, has, has no, you know, to, to say something so stupid that, to say that, that the reason why the, the unemployment level is low is because people have two or three jobs. It, 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 that's, that's not how any of this works. Like, I, I don't understand how a person like this could even get in the ballot, you know, unless, again... I mean, because it takes a lot of money to get onto a ballot like this, especially in New York City. Obviously, obviously, George Soros is funding this or other people like him. It's, it's just frightening. And the same thing I would say with Yafet. Most likely, I believe, this is a Soros-funded project to undermine not only... It's not an attack just on the Hasidic community. It's an attack on all religious people and really all liberty-loving people. You could be an atheist libertarian... And this is a threat to you as well, what the Yafed is trying to do, you know. And it's really a threat to the foundations of America. And that's why this is so frightening that this is happening now. Now, the stupidity, you know, it's hard to, to fathom whether it's... I don't believe anyone is that stupid as this lawsuit that Yafed is making against the state of New York... So it, it must be just sure, pure evil, you know. Um, the, the, so what's happening now, this, this monster, monster, monster is um, trying to sue the state of New York um, uh, because he doesn't like the way the yeshivas operate. And he's, he says, you know, they're illegal and they have to be forced. And, and why isn't New York stepping up and doing their job and enforcing the law? Now, I'm going to answer why this lawsuit is totally idiotic. This is the equivalent to, let's say, you, you make a lawsuit against a karate school or a ballet school... Why aren't you teaching U.S. history? Why aren't you teaching biology? Why aren't, why aren't you teaching calculus? Well, well, this is a karate school. We, we, we teach karate. This is a... This is a... Now, let, let's put it into perspective. There are different types of yeshivas, different types of Jewish parochial schools. Some schools meet the basic legal requirement for elementary school. Uh, almost all of the elementary schools meet the basic requirement, except for a certain Chabad schools. All the Satmar, everybody, they all teach the basic requirements for elementary school. Both for the boys and for the girls, except the girls get more than the basic requirements, and the boys just get the basic requirements. In the high schools, usually the girls get more, but still they don't generally get the regents, especially in the more cloistered Hasidic schools. And the boys, uh, although they get a full, vibrant, uh, secular curriculum, and many of the boys' schools, mostly the Hasidic schools, but also some of the non-Hasidic schools as well, don't offer any English. Or some offer some basic English, 
Um, when I say English, I mean secular studies, but not enough for a regents, and some offer a regents diploma. You know, some even offer GED. Even among the Hasidic schools, they offer GED courses. You can go on your own and take the GED. being said, if you have a school that's claiming, so so the issue that he's having here is that the boys high schools don't teach secular studies. The law recently was changed to say that they don't have to. But really, the fact of the matter is, is these schools are under no obligation to, to teach any type of curriculum any more than a karate school has any obligation to teach anything other than karate. A Jewish parochial school that's advertising, we only, they're not even advertising, they don't need to advertise, they have their students. They have their student body, they don't need to advertise, people choose within the community, this is where they want to go to school. Some of them advertise, the smaller schools, and may, even many of those don't. And these schools, they they teach all these ideas and whatever. And they're only doing, they're only giving what they're advertising. If a school was claiming we're teaching a region's curriculum and they don't, then they could be in trouble because that would be illegal. That would be false advertising. But the, the boys' high schools that don't teach any secular studies don't receive funding from the school districts in the way that the schools that do teach English do. They might receive other funding for food or whatever. That's a separate issue. But they don't receive funding for education because they're not teaching... The, the curriculum, the, the, meaning the point is, and ju just like how uh, a karate school does it, and if a parent is paying, they're not paying for English in these schools. If they want to send their, if they want their kids to have English, they can send somewhere else. It's a free country. Now people will go and say, well, there's peer pressure. That's your business. That's not the government's business. There's such a thing as freedom of assembly in the First Amendment. That's the one people forget about. We always remember freedom of speech and freedom of religion and freedom of the press. There's also freedom of assembly, which really also means freedom of association. And the freedom of association means... Nobody, the government is not forcing you to join this club, to be a member of this church, the synagogue. Now, your parents might push you, your friends might push you, but in the end, it's your choice to get up and say, you know what, I, I, I'm, I'm done with this, I'm leaving, and people leave all the time. And that's America, and that's fine. And But just the same, the people have the right the other way. To say, well, I love this. I love this community. I love this way of life. This is how I want to raise my kids, and it's fine. And if the kids aren't happy when they're 18, they can they can go their own way. And the thing is, you know, they don't have to drop everything. But they, if they want to drop everything, that's their own business. I'm saying, from the government standpoint, the government has no business in these type of questions because if you can force a yeshiva to teach secular studies. Why can't you force a ballet school to teach math? Why can't you teach the karate school to teach science? Meaning, uh, these are businesses, they're non-profit businesses, they're, they're religious organizations that have as their purpose to teach religious studies. And there's no obligation on, on the part of the school at all provide anything other than what it's claiming to sell, to offer any any 
services other than what it's claiming to serve, to serve. Because then you could say the same thing about, I mean, where do you draw the line? It's an arbitrary line between a day school, when I say day school, I mean a, a full-time yeshiva, and a, and a Sunday school or an after-school program. What? It's the, that line is arbitrary. Because just the same, the parents can decide on their own. Yeah, all day from 8 in the morning till 5 at night, I'm sending my kid to this, to this parochial school where they're only studying religious studies. And then 5 o'clock they come home and I'll hire a tutor or I'll teach them myself homeschool or I'll send them to another school, an after school program for their secular studies. And the, if there is an obligation on, as far as the secular studies, the obligation does not belong to the school. The obligation belongs to the parents. And, and when it comes to high school, there is no obligation because you're allowed to drop out of high school. The, obli the legal obligation is only with elementary school. And even with that, when it comes to homeschooling in, in, in New York, there's very little oversight. And this is the problem. Once you start attacking the yeshivas, then it's a threat to the to homeschoolers. And you have all different kinds of homeschoolers, both on the left and the right, religious and secular. There are all different types of theories on how to approach schooling. And it's the parents who can make the choice of how to educate their children. It's not only about yeshivas. This is the point that we have to remember. It's not just about the yeshivas. And the fact of the matter is, is that it's going to lead to slippery slope. Because if you force a lot of, you know, I, I, there was one of these um, rallies against the yeshivas. And they were talking about, you know, Oh, the yeshivas, they're, they're not teaching gay studies. They're not teaching sex education. They're not teaching this, they're not teaching that. Well, it's not just the yeshivas. It's a, a lot of the private parochial schools have different ideas about what, what, what's appropriate for kids to learn and what's not, different ideas, different things that they teach. So why, you know, why, uh, so it, it's a slippery slope. The next thing, once you get the government involved, first they're going to force you to teach evolution. Then they're going to force you to teach sex education. Then they're going to force you to teach the gay studies. They're going to force all of these things that go against our religious beliefs. Or, or as other, if not our religion, other religions that have religious beliefs about it. And they're going to force these things down our throat. And then when the other religion, when the Christian schools and the Muslim schools are going to be forced to teach gay studies, and sex education, and evolution, but well, what's going to be next? Then they're going to they're going to be forced to all these things, right? And then what? And then who are they going to blame? They're going to blame the Jews, and they'll be right because it's. it's self-hating Jews like Naftali Muster who are now making the problems for the Christians and the Muslims because they opened that can of worms. But then it's not, it's more than that because then it's not just the, the religious schools, it's even the, the after-school program. How dare you call yourself a karate school, you know, or a ballet school or an art school if you call yourself a school, 
you're gonna have to teach arithmetic, and you're gonna have to teach spelling, and you have to teach, you know, world history. Where do you draw the line? And so it's a frivolous lawsuit, and you're not gonna attack each and every parent who has a different approach to their, uh, you know, to their uh, way of teaching. So, this, this, for this reason, groups like Pearls and everything to really team up with, first of all, the other religions, and second of all, the homeschoolers, and really, third of all, all of the different types of schools that exist, because these attacks on the yeshivas are frivolous, are silly, are nonsense, and uh, the unfortunate thing is we have a lot of crazy judges who legislate from the bench, and who might be pushing in an unconstitutional way. And so this is why it's so important that we have constitutional judges who follow the Constitution and who are not legislating from the bench. Because it, it's, it's out of control. It's ridiculous. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, and, and, and let me know what you think about what do I have to say about this is it wrong to, to, to compare a yeshiva that doesn't claim to teach English with uh, a, any other school a karate school that doesn't claim to, to, to be teaching math you know that's just the way it is and it's and it's really an attack on the communities. It's an attack on our way of life. It's an attack on our culture. And, and just like there are attacks on other cultures. And it's already been found in the Supreme Court that the Amish are allowed to raise their kids the way they want. And so too, if you're Hindu or Sikh or Buddhist or Jewish or Christian or Muslim or atheist, it's up to you as a parent to decide, not up to the schools. And if Naftali Muster wants to send his kids to other schools, nobody's forcing him to send his kids to the same schools he went to. And incidentally, among the Hasidic schools, he went to Bells. Bells has a lot more, a lot stronger English program than a lot of other schools. So all of his complaints and are, are, are nonsense, are just his attacks on the community and not authentic care, and also a power grab, a Marxist power grab, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if George Soros is behind this. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, and, um, and, and let me know what, what else, what other ideas you have.